Chris Bird has those kind of legs that can get him out of trouble. Good upper body good movement. movement. Very yeah. good upper body movement. There. <laughs> there is a movement there. Vassar ends up between the ropes. Well, the speed edge, no question, goes to Bird. Vassar a little more ponderous in his movement, but a heavy-handed puncher. Ooh, that was a good fight. Amateur fight. 1991. Good fight. Frank Vassar. Shout out to Frank Vassar. Chris Burr here with another true story. How are you doing today? So today I'm going back. We're going back, back to 1992. Back to Barcelona, after Barcelona. Flying home from Barcelona, it was, it was, it was just unbelievable. I won a silver medal in the Olympics. I, I thought I should have won a gold, but I won a silver. I was so happy on the plane. We're going to Washington, D.C. from Barcelona, going to the White House. Went to the White House, it was so much fun. <clears throat> Got to meet the president. John Sakata, the singer, I remember he was there and he turned it out in the White House. We was all dancing in the White House. I remember Oscar De La Hoya saying, man, he went to the bathroom. He said, man, I, I wiped my butt with the same thing the president wiped his butt with. That just, we're kids, so it, it, was just, it was just funny. We had so much fun. And then the anticipation of going home and celebrating with my family, winning a silver medal, I was like, this is unbelievable. A silver medal in the Olympics. I was, oh, I was out of my mind. I was like, this is the time. I was looking forward to my professional career. I'm thinking, okay, I, I didn't know anything about professional. I didn't know nothing about professional, how professional boxing go, how contracts get signed. All I thought was, I won a silver medal in the Olympics. I know I'm gonna have a promotional contract waiting for me somewhere, but with a major promoter, I'm gonna have a managerial contract somewhere. I'm like, oh my goodness. Me and my brother Patrick, who almost made the Olympics, he lost the Olympic trials to Pepe Riley, who made the Olympics. I was like, we're set. We're gonna have a, and my father, who was Olympic coach, he was Olympic head coach. I was like, we got this all set. My career is going to be the perfect path. I'm like, we're going to have some money. I'm going to start my career. It's good. Get home. Just celebrate it. We, we land. Surprise at the airport. It was crazy. All these people celebrating flags and, and banners and stuff. I'm like, this is how you're supposed to get treated. Man, Olympic silver medal. It felt so good. I'm like, ah. It's time to get, watch when I turn pro. Watch when I turn pro. I'm gonna win a world title, I'm gonna kill it, I'm gonna do it for my hometown. Flint, Michigan, let's get it. So I come home, I'm expecting soon. I'm thinking, okay, managers and promoters, they gonna call, they gonna give me a few days, I'm home, I'm sitting, I'm waiting. They throwing parties for me here. And then my brother get married. I come home August 12th, 1992. My brother get married August 15th of 1992. That's my birthday. He get married on my birthday. And I was like, man, look how special this is. And it was a party that day at a club. I went to a club that night. I didn't even know it was a party for me. I went to the club, it was a party for me. I was like, this is great. On the same night of my brother's wedding, after the wedding, we went to the club. We just kicked in. We was like, oh, man, this is the best time of my life. I mean, I've been celebrating everywhere. And then when the smoke clears, <laughs> the smoke after about a week, two weeks, the smoke clear. A couple people called. A, couple, a manager called me, said, I want to come in and speak to you. So I was like, oh, a major manager. I'm, don't mention, I won't mention no names. A, a big time manager who signed a major fighter. I was like, oh, I get a chance to maybe he may manage me. I may get a chance to be with him. I'm going to hit big time. I'm going to hit start him quick. Let's get it. He come in, me, my father, and my mother, we all talked to him in, my, in our living room. We talked. You know, he was talking, you know, championship stuff, stuff way over our heads. This, this is new to us. I'm like, okay, okay, this is it. So we, we talk, he leave. 
That's one guy that came in. He never called back. <laughs> I'm like, what? He never calls back. Uh, another, the second one came in was a was a actually a former boxer, a former world champion. He had a group of guys that want to invest in a fighter. So he was like, hey. He came in, he flew in, met with my parents, met with, with me, and we talked. And he actually told me, man, I think you should fight at 154. I'm like, 54? I fight at 165 in the Olympics at middleweight. So uh, I'm 154 is junior middleweight. And I'm like, hmm. And pro, I'm like, hmm. That's the first time anybody ever said that to me. You should fight at a lower weight like that. I'm thinking, hmm. I may do that. So they came, we talked, no contract signed, nothing. They didn't come with a deal, but they never called me back. Devastating. And then I had a third guy come in. He wasn't really that serious. And this is this is get probably a month after the Olympics. Like a month, maybe a month and a half. And I'm and I'm getting kind of concerned. I'm like, hmm, where's everybody? Where are the big promoters? Where are even the promoters in my state? Not even managers, promoters. <sighs> Nothing came to see me. I'm like, I want a silver medal in the Olympics. Really? Everybody gets signed. I mean, it wasn't just a silver medal. The committee came to me, of officials came to me before the final and said, if you win, if you win your final bout, you'll be the outstanding boxer of the tournament. That means I'll be the world's best amateur boxer. The world's best. And I was this close from losing it. This close, I'm sorry, this close from getting it. That close. And, and months after Olympics, I'm struggling like, where is everybody? What, what? This is my career. So... Come November of 1992, my father get a call. He get a call from a promoter from Vegas. He comes in, he, well, he get a call, and the call was, hey, I see Chris is now fighting. Hey, I, I, can, um, I can put on a show for you guys. And I'm, my father, he called me and said, hey, I, a promoter called and said, hey, he can put a show on for you. He can do this, 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 and that. So that promoter and his group comes in, and I'm like, oh, my goodness, Vegas. He's from Las Vegas? I'm from Flint, Michigan. So that, that's humongous to me. And it's pro boxing, so he laid it all out for me. What I'm going to do with my first fight, 60 grand my first, 60,000. The most I ever had in my pocket ever was $2,500, and that was a bonus I had from, from the amateur boxing for being – for being top six in the world. So I got a $2,500 bonus. He says 60000 My first fight, I'm like, I can buy my city. I, I didn't know. <laughs> I thought that was a little ton of money. I never had that. I was like, oh my goodness. And then they laid out what's going to happen after that fight. You'll fight this fight. You'll fight here. You'll do this. I'm thinking in my mind, are you serious? After nothing happened, we get a phone call. And now I'm fighting, and now, oh my goodness. So the fight, January 28th. My mother's birthday, January 29th. So it's a celebration for her birthday. My, my pro debut, January 28th, 1993. I'm getting ready for it. They, the, their promotion came in, set it all up. They put the, a boxing ring in, the, in our little mall, Genesee Valley Mall, right in the middle, a boxing ring. We was training out in the mall every day, trying to promote the fight, promote the fight. People come talking. We training, working. January 28th rolls around. I'm going crazy. I mean, we're doing promotions all the way through, but did January 28th come around? I still remember this. Because on January 28th, 1993, I got locked out of my house. It was, I let, I had a little puppy, little Rottweiler puppy. I let him out. His name was Tyson, after Mike Tyson. I let him out to go pee. 
And I stepped out with him, and the door closed, and it was locked, and locked behind. And I was like, oh, no, the day of the fight. I'm out. Now, this is Michigan. Probably 28, 27 degrees. I didn't know anybody in that area. I knew one, no, yes, I did. I knew one person. One person named Pat Gillen, my brother friend. He wasn't home. And I'm like, oh, and no cell phones at the time. So who do I call? I'm walking around. I had to wait till somebody come to the to the apartment area to let me in. One of the manager. And Finally, I got in. Day of the fight, freezing. Me and the dog. Fight the guy. He's a, he's a probably about uh, 10, 10, 12 pounds less than me. This is how bootleg all this stuff is. He's a small guy. He probably had 25 fights. He had all kind of fights. I'm like, man, he's small. So we, we get to the arena. It's... um. The excitement, like I said, was, was crazy. I mean, for me. And then, you know, my, my, uh, I was a co main event that night. My friend was the main event. His name is Tim Little. He fought a dangerous guy named Ray Lathan, who I fought amateur with. And, you know, you, you wait in the fight. I'm in the locker room. I'm waiting to fight. I'm going crazy. I'm like, oh man, the anticipation. You know, we had no TVs in the room, so we didn't know how. The outside was going, how how big the crowd was, how everything. I didn't know nothing. I'm just sitting in my locker room, getting ready to fight. Boom, my fight comes up. They say, okay, it's time to come walk to, to the ring. I started walking to the ring. Hit the arena. Hit the arena, boom. Soon as I hit the arena, 5,000-seat arena in my hometown. Look around as I'm walking. This is my pro debut. My pro debut. There's probably a hundred people in the arena. I was like, what? About a hundred people there, maybe. Man, I fought a six rounder. That's and for me, coming out of amateur, amateur is three minutes, three rounds, three minutes. I fight, I'm fighting a six rounder in my first fight. That's two amateur fights. And I'm thinking, man, nobody in the arena. I'm fighting a six-rounder against a smaller guy. But at least I was thinking, I'm going to get $60,000 for it. My, for my pro debut, I'm still getting sixty grand. Ah, Let's get it. So I boxed lack, a lackluster, you know, win. You know, I won. First, first fight. My brother Patrick, he fought in the card. He won. I, after my fight, I win the fight. I go in the I go sit in the stands to watch my my friend Tim Little's fight. He was the main event, so I was like, okay, let me sit, let me see. I didn't even go in the locker room. I said, I just stood right there, watch a fight, fight the fight with ten rounds. Great fight, Tim wins. So after the fight, I'm still out there, I haven't changed. And the few people that were at the fight, they're talking to me. Okay, I'm talking to a few people. Then Tim, he gets out. He wins a fight, gets out of the ring. We both start talking, and we were like, okay, let's go to the locker room. We, we get, take a shower, get dressed. It's time to get paid. So we go get paid, okay. It's time to get paid. We come together. As we're going to get paid, we're walking down the hall, and we see, we see a crowd of people out there. And as I'm getting closer, I hear my father. And the one word you hear... <laughs> I'm going to say it. The one word you hear, I knew he was crazy mad. I knew something was really wrong. He said, God damn it. I kept hearing, God damn it. God damn it. You better give me the money. God damn it. I was like, what? As soon as we get closer, one of the boxers say, nobody's getting paid tonight. <sighs> nobody's getting paid. What does that mean? I'm like, what? What does that mean? I don't know anything about pro boxing. You know, everybody get paid. There's no money. Are you serious? This time in my life, here I get married. I got a brand new baby. Brand new baby. Are you? What? I couldn't understand that. 
and then my father and I argued, uh, 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 and whatever little money they made at the at the fight, he snatched it up the table. Give me that money, and he came out. He said, "Y'all better." Told the rest of the boxers out there, "Y'all better go get your money, cause I just took I just took all of it. So if they got any money in there, you better go fight. You better go shake them down." And everybody's looking like, "What are you two, what, what are you talking about?" Cause nobody could understand. I mean, we had a major promotion there, main event. My friend Tim Littles was under main events, the Duva promotion, and they looking like nobody getting paid. It was so embarrassing. It was embarrassing and crushing at the same time. What do I do? I mean, I know nothing. I, I'm with a, a promoter. I thought, okay, we had a whole plan what we're gonna do for the whole year and everything. Now all that is gone. I'm sitting there like this, wow, nothing. I have nothing. I mean, I, I, if I go get a job, I would never box because I had to take care of my family. I would never fall. I'm like, no, this is too hard. So, so in not getting paid, come to find out what we found out is that some investors pulled out that he had and nobody came to the fight. So how are you going to pay anybody? And so he didn't have the money. So it was, it was very, um, um, I mean, just very unfortunate for him that it happened. But what about us, the fighters? We, we trained, we did everything. This is my pro debut after winning this Olympic silver medal. 60 grand, nothing. They knew prior to the fight that the investors pulled out. So they were making... We got to sell this place out. And then they started figuring out nobody buying tickets. So they thought all the walk-up tickets, because that's how sports is, all the walk-up, there is sellout. This kid is popular in his hometown. I guess I was. <laughs> you talk about crushing. I was 22 years old, starting my life. This is my life. Crush. So for the next... <laughs> Three, I mean, for after that, next three, four months, uh, we hook up with a guy that he, um, I mean, we didn't do nothing for the next three, four months. And then we met a guy that works at Gold's Gym and said, hey, I can work you guys out. So he he started working us out at the Gold's Gym. Me and my brother Patrick, we started working out there. Not just, I never lifted weights before. He was just, say, I can put some little muscle on you, a little tone. And so just in case, Something comes up. I had nothing. Borrowing money from everybody. Borrowing money, especially my mother, my 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 uh, mother-in-law, Mary. She she funded everything for me. She helped me get through everything. Shout out to Mary, Mary. Love you to death, Mitch and Mary. I love you guys. But it going through that, borrowing money, doing all this stuff. You like really. My pro career, I mean, what am I? Huh. So the guy at the Gold's Gym, he's working us out. He said, hey, you guys are out boxing. I can put a show up for you. <laughs> he worked at Gold's Gym. He said, hey, if I can get some help a little bit, I, I'll do something. This is like, we fought in January 20th. At, January 28th. I think this is. April or May of, of uh, 20, I mean, 20, of 1993. So I was like, hey, anybody, I don't care who it is. If you can help us do something, help us. He puts on the show, the same exact thing happened. Nobody come, in my hometown, nobody come, nobody get paid. That was a hard one because after that I'm like I gotta get a job well I'm gonna work I've boxed my whole life since I was five years old all I banked it on was the Olympics I made the Olympics when I silver medal and now this I'm like what do I I mean it was it was a hard time so my brother 
it was summertime in Michigan. And right at, I mean, it was right after I fought. And my brother Joe, he worked at GM, and he had a, on the side a lawn business. And so after he come home from G, after come home from work at GM, he'd go cut grass. He loved it in the summer and in, in the spring, summer, and, and a little bit in the fall. He loved it. That's what he loved. So he's like, Chris, you want to help me? I give you all the money. He used to, hmm. he used to give me ah. He used to give me all the money from from that just to live. He was like, man, he still believed in my dream. He was like, man, you so good. I'm going to do this for you, though. We're going to work our butt off. We worked our butt off. I'm cutting grass with them. I'm doing I love guys that cut grass. They know it. My brother was the best. I mean, he is sharpening a lawn up like crazy. I'm like, man, look at that. That's a natural, natural ability. Nobody taught him. I was like, man, he's good. And he just kicked me all the money. I was like, thanks a lot, man. I need it. It's a few hundred dollars every time we went, but... Hey, it helped out. It helped out. Then I borrow. And then, oh man, just so much going on. So this had to be like May of 1993. I'm cutting grass with my brother. Just have my headphones on. Lady comes out of the yard we're cutting. She said, hey, Chris. I was at the airport when you came home from the Olympics. Oh man, just, it was a great time. Man, it was wonderful to see you cut my grass. So that moment, I was like, I'm not supposed to be doing this. Come on. I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't embarrassed. I wasn't, you know, I, I was just dumbfounded. Like, what am I doing? I mean, I wasn't like truly embarrassed, but I was kind of. So I'm like, man, the thought hit me. I'm fighting that middleweight at the time. That's 165 pounds. And nothing happening. I'm going to heavyweight. And going to heavyweight is, is like a crazy, crazy thought. It's, it's the craziest thought ever. Because I'm fighting that middleweight. And heavyweight, like I said, I weighed like 100, I probably weighed 165, 170 pounds at the time. I got to get to 210 pounds. I got to gain all this weight. Just to be a small heavyweight. A small one. It'd be like Floyd Mayweather coming out of the Olympics. He weighed 125 pounds coming out of the Olympics. It'd be like him putting on 50, 40, 50 pounds going up to 175. But he only weighs 154 when he fights. That's what I did at heavyweight. It was crazy. The thought was crazy. But I was like, I'm going to work. I got the idea I'm moving to heavyweight. I was like, forget it. I was, I was like, forget it. I'm going there. Which is the craziest, the craziest thought ever. Ever. Everything. Heavyweight is not, that's a whole different world. I didn't know nothing about heavyweight. I'm like, I'm going to heavyweight. But in going to heavyweight, you got to relearn everything. I mean, these guys are six foot four six foot five at that time i'll tell you about how big they really got later but guys were big bigger tall you gotta learn boxing i'm like mm. i didn't think about it at the moment but i'm just going ahead with i had that on my mind I'm, i gotta shock the world nothing's happening for me i gotta do something man so I got excited i'm like okay i'm going ahead with i don't know how i'm gonna get there i don't know what's gonna happen but i'm gonna do it so i just started i started just Planning, eating certain stuff, getting my way back up to heavyweight. Got to get my weight up. And you talk about how hard it is to gain weight. People talk about how hard it is to lose weight. Try to keep your weight up. I, I'm not going to recommend it, but go put on, go, just try to go put on 50 pounds and you're skinny. I was, I was a really skinny guy and hard to put weight on. I'm eating all this food and I'm trying to put this weight on. I was, I was like, hey, I'm fighting somewhere. I'm putting weight on it and have no goal to fight, no fight date, no nothing. But my thought was, my thought was, if I go to heavyweight, I just go to heavyweight. I just had a feeling in my mind 
And in my heart that I'm going to fight somewhere. I'm just going to fight. I don't know how. I don't know. Nothing was happening. I'm cutting grass. I just, I'm going to fight. If I go to heavyweight, I'm going to fight. So my brother calls me one day and says, Chris, I made some flyers. I'm going to go out. Nothing's happening. Now I'm in the process of being a heavyweight at this time. In the process. I mean, I'm getting, I probably weighed about, about 190, 90 pounds. And I was just so surprised. I'm like, 190 pounds, that's just huge for me. And he said, I got some flyers. I'm going to ask for some money in some of these businesses on Corona Road in Flint, Michigan. And you want to go with me? I'm like, I'm not going. No, I was too embarrassed. I was like, they, they'll recognize me. That's an Olympian. He wants a silver medal. Why do you ask for money? So he was like, okay, I'm going to go. So he goes out, asks him, going with his flyers, pass them out, ask, asking people for money and um, to support our career. He runs across this guy that owns a, a laminating business named Dave LaSage. And Dave told Patrick, they talked about, you know, everything. He's seen our plight. You know, he's seen some stuff in the paper, seeing that we wasn't fighting or anything. And so they talked for a little bit. And he said, well, I don't have much money, but I have a venue. I have a little small venue. Hey, we can put some shows on there if I can get some help. And the first thing my brother thought, oh, my father. My father was Mr. Boxing. He's Mr. Do It All. Put rings up, put on shows, do everything. So he calls me, my brother calls me. Hey, Chris, I found a guy. He, he's going to help us out. He got a venue. He don't got much money, but he got a venue. So we call our father. Father, we call Dave and say they meet, and then... Stuff get works out, worked out, everything going, boom. Knockout promotions is in effect. We're fighting in a, the, the place he has is a little, little nightclub, little nightclub. It's called The Network in Flint, Michigan. I think it had about 250, 300 people. And now I'm at this new weight class, fighting heavyweights. I didn't even think about it. I didn't even think about it. I'm just putting on weight. Never thought about fighting. I just want to put on the weight. And now I might be fighting. Oh, oh, I'm fighting the heavyweight. I'm like, oh, snap. So they work out a deal. And next thing you know, we have a fight coming up at the network. They put on the show. When I, when I seen that, when I draw, drove past the network and I seen it on the sign, I'm like, are you kidding? I'm fighting my whole day. I don't care. I didn't care where I fought. It could have been in my basement. I don't care. It could have been in my backyard. I, I'm boxing. Now, ah, uh, Knockout Promotions got his first show. Me, my brother Patrick, and all of our teammates from our boxing team. All of them. They fighting on the card. We're all boxing. Knockout Promotions is in effect in Flint, Michigan. And we're going to wild the crowd for eight or nine fights at the nightclub. So the fight was coming up at the nightclub. I was so excited, but I was thinking, man, I'm fighting that heavyweight. This is some big stuff. I mean, I had to relearn boxing big time. The height, the size, I mean, everything that goes with heavyweight boxing. Matter of fact, I didn't even have a heavyweight this far away in Michigan when I was, when I was training. When I first moved to heavyweight, nobody's far away. The biggest guy was my brother, Joe. He weighed my brother Joe weighed, no, actually, he, he weighed 175. The biggest guy was Mike Susky. He, he, at the time, he was weighed by 190. And heavyweights at that time, 225, 230, 240, he's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I'm sparring with little guys. And we have a fight coming up. And I'm, my first fight coming up at the network, I fought um, Exum Spade. He weighed like 195, a natural guy, a natural cruiser cruiserweight, which is 190 now. It was, I mean, 200 now was 190 back then. So these guys are just humongous to me. To me. To everybody else, that's small. But to me, I was like, man, these guys are huge. And what I'm doing is ridiculous. I'm going from middleweight to heavyweight. This never been done before. No Olympic silver medalist ever came out and 
after two fights, well, I'm going to go to heavyweight. Well, it would be like Floyd Mayweather coming out of, out of the Olympics in 1996. He won a bronze medal at 125. It would be like him going to light heavyweight, 175 pounds, 125 to 175. But he only weighs 154 pounds, which is a junior middleweight. But he's fighting 175 pounds. But he really, in his mind, he's thinking, I'm a featherweight. I'm not, I'm not a welterweight. I'm not a light heavyweight. I'm nothing. I'm just a little guy. And I'm fighting this in his mind he's thinking that. That's what I thought in my mind in every heavyweight fight. I never got used to it. How do you get used to it? You never. I fought small my whole life. I fought under 165 or under my whole entire life up until that point. And now I'm fighting somebody 195. I'm like, look how big he is. And that, and this is the small so-called heavyweight. What? That's what I was doing at this weight class. And then you got to fight all these guys at a weight class just like that in a whole career. It was crazy. That time was was ridiculous. I had that first fight club in the I had that first fight in a nightclub, and I was like, when I went, I looked across the room, like, how big he is? God, I'm fighting six rounds. I got to fight him? And I didn't hurt him at all. He had probably over 20 fights. He was, you know, experienced. He was probably like 10 and 10, 10 and 11, something like that. To me, he was a world champion level. And we fought six rounds going back and forth. And I outpointed six rounds, and I couldn't believe it that I beat a man that weighed 195 pounds. Wow. It was surreal. I made $600 that night for a six round fight, Olympic silver medalist. Mm. $600. But I was boxing. I was so happy. I was like, I'm in the fight now. I'm about to wow the crowd. It's about to be a lot of fun. I may not make that much money, but at least I'm boxing. My brother Patrick fought that night. He won. My, Mike Susky, Jimmy Poe, all the guys at the gym, we all got a victory that night. It was a great night of boxing. And many more nights were coming. I'm fighting the, uh, two months later. Another fight at the nightclub. Now, promoter Dave LeSage and his crew... He's a real promoter. But I was like, okay, we got to find fights. He's going places. He's calling all these low-level boxing people. I mean, low-level, <laughs> the lowest level. I, I never thought I'd be a part of something like that. I'm like, okay, I fought a guy. I think my, my second fight in nightclub, I fought somebody. I fought a guy. It wasn't even his real name because he came back the next fight and fought my friend. If I beat him, how is he undefeated in the next fight? That's how low-level boxing is. I mean, you you have fake IDs, people come with fake names, come and do all this stuff in the nightclub. It's the, I'm fighting in a nightclub. So I'm an elite high at the highest level amateur. At the highest level. You can't get no more higher than the Olympics. Won a silver medal. Won, went to all the amateur world tournaments. Did all the stuff. And did all that to come back to fight in a nightclub where people, <laughs> boxers and coaches and managers are scheming, cheating, changing names, different licenses. you like, it's crazy. And, I, and I'm fighting. This is how my pro career is. But... Hey, you got to do what you got to do. You got to do what you got to do to make it your dreams come true. Never give up. Don't ever quit. I could have quit so many times. I'm like, man, forget that. I could have went and got a job. But everybody knew around me and I knew if I get a job, I'm going to give up on my dream. And I ain't going to never give up on that. I'll never give up on it. Never. I mean, I fought at the lowest level. It was six hundred dollars. That's that Rocky stuff. You watch Rocky one. Rocky one. Look how Rocky was in a nightclub. What was he doing? A low level fighter trying to make his way out. 
I'm the Black Rocky. Really? And the real one. This stuff happened for real to me. I'm like, this, this can't be made up. I mean, I'm an Olympic silver medalist. Fight is less than a year later. I'm in Olympics. I'm in Olympics, and less than a year later, I'm in a nightclub fighting. How is that possible? But from the nightclub, I learned a lot of stuff. What I learned was humbleness. I was at the highest level of amateur coming out of Olympics. I, I'm supposed to get this, 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 this. And when you don't get it, you're very humble. I'm like this. Mm. I had to look at life totally different now. I'm like, mm, you're not the man. You got to work your butt off for everything you get in this life. And I worked my butt off to, to reach these different levels. And it made me realize, mm, you do have to work, but you do have to humble yourself and be like this. Mm, and listen. And just listen to people. Listen to advice and be like, mm, okay. Don't think you know everything. Because I've been boxing up five years old. I think I know everything. And fighting that heavyweight, fighting these fights, it made me realize you don't know nothing. You don't because everything's different. So it just humbled me in such a way. I didn't like it, believe me. And I still, up until this day, I like the humbleness part, yes. But fighting these big guys at heavyweight. Because at, after the nightclub, the fights got harder, harder. Guys got better, bigger, stronger, faster. You like, oh, but at the same time, I got better. I got faster. I got mentally stronger. So uh, on that course, everything is rising up at the same time to for me to be the best I could be in this in this sport. And in boxing, that's what I was. A small guy, one of the most feared guys in, in the sport, coming from a nightclub. A nightclub. I had nothing. And I'm nothing. You hear the story. We can do anything in our one life. Let's get it. Put it in your mind. Have a dream and work toward that dream. I just kept working toward it. I knew in my mind. I kept saying to myself, I'm going to be heavyweight champion. I'm going to be heavyweight champion. When everybody else was looking at me like this, man, you crazy. You're going to get hurt. You know Mike Tyson in this division, and he's champion at time. You know Evander Holyfield is it? Is in this division. Do you know Lennox Lewis, that big, that big six foot five, 250 pound guy, Olympic gold medalist at super middle, at super heavyweight? You gonna get hurt. You gonna get hurt. And now the Klitschko brothers come. You like, man, six, seven, six, eight giants. I'm in division with those, with all those guys. And I'm the most feared guy in the division. Nobody wanted to fight me. Nobody. I get, I get, go through the division, the, the division where I'm kind of scared. I'm like, mm. now everybody's scared of me. It felt so good at first. At first. And then like, hmm, how you going to make money? How's this going to happen? I got a true story for you. A very true story. That's a true story. But this is a true one. 1995, George Foreman wins the title. <sighs> he knocks out Michael Moore. I was at the fight. I was like, what? Michael Moore was giving him the business for the whole fight easy. And then, boom, one punch. The whole arena goes crazy. We're all like, what? Wow, George Foreman at 45 win the title. Go back home. We go by. My lawyer called me, John Horner. He says, hey, Chris, I got some good news and some bad news. I was like, well, give me the good news first. He said, man, you're on the list of 50, 50 guys, 50 boxers to fight George Foreman. He could pick 50 guys. You're on the list. I was like, ah, I'm 15 and no at the time. I'm like, ah, yes, 15 and no. The bad, what's the bad news? You're the only one on the list he won't fight. 15 and 0. That's how my career went. 
I can cry right now because I would go to a gym, nobody wants to spar with me. I go to fight, if, if I, I got a fight uh, coming up, okay, we got a fight schedule for you, now we got to find your opponent. I won't know until the day, maybe two days before. I'm like, really? Because all the guys keep pulling out, pulling out. I don't want to fight him. No, he's too, he's left handed, he's slick, he's this, that. And I came and punched. I won two heavyweight titles on defense. Never heard a guy in, in, on defense. Really? That's just a life in boxing, man. I, I, I love this sport. I figure it out. I study it all the time. I work on my craft. I want to be the best. And on this comeback, this 50-year-old gray man, will I have the same problems that I had in my first career as far as getting fights? I want to get fights. I want to fight the best guys in the world. I want to fight the young guys. I fight all the old guys in the Legend League. I fight all the young guys in the in the uh, um, the young league, I call it. I, I'm trying to fight. I'm trying to figure out a league for the young guys. But I'll fight everybody. I'm the I'm the guy at heavyweight. I was willing to face anybody. I didn't care. I'd fight 200, 210 pounds. If you go back and look at all my fights, I fought all these big guys. You're like, who is that little guy? Who is that? Never get any credit for it, being the small guy. When somebody weighed 40, 50, 30, I'll say this, from 5 to 50 pounds bigger. 5 to 50 pounds. 5. 5. And I use five because one pound in boxing, you can get fined in a world title, in a major world title fight, you can find hundred thousand dollars over one pound. One. It's cry. People cry over a half a pound, a quarter of a pound. Oh, he's a quarter of a pound overweight, and they'll complain. And I, I got outweighed in a world title fight, a world title fight. Fifty. Six pounds in a world title fight. At, the, at that time, it had never been done before. And I had been fighting guys prior to that that weighed more than 56 pounds in, in non-world title fights. I fought big my whole career. Everybody's bigger than me. Bigger, 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 bigger. I look at, like, Hall of Fame. I should have been pound for pound the best fighter in the world. Easy. How? how why not? I shouldn't have pound. I never made the pound pound list. Wow. Never made the pound pound list. I'm getting out weighed every fight. Just on weight, I should have made the pound pound list. I'm back though. I'm coming back at 50. Look at me. Look. Gotta take it off. Gotta, let's get it. I'm ready to get out. I'll fight any middleweight in the world. Any middle, super middle, light heavyweight. Middleweight title first. Then it's super middle. Then it's like, I'm getting mine in this, in this, in this boxing. In this one life. I'm going to get it. Let's get it, people. You, we live one time. When I turned 50 years old, something clicked in my brain. I was like, mmm. The next 50 years? This 50 years went by so fast. Imagine the next 50 years. I'd be 100 years old talking the same thing. No, I'm getting it. I'm not going to talk about a comeback. I'm coming back. And I'm coming back to get what's mine, world titles. I'm going to be the best in the world. Watch, at 50. That's why I work my butt off every day to get what I want to get in my life. And that to be the best in the world. Let's get it, people. One life. And I rise up, I rise like